The Special Investigating Unit has referred over a hundred cases related to PPE corruption to the National Prosecuting Authority. According to reports, the cases amount to more than 14 billion rand. Amnesty International South Africa says people involved in these crimes have to feel and face the full might of the law. Its executive director, Shanila Mohammed, joins us now to discuss this further. Shanila, thank you for your time. Isn't it almost unbelievable that in the midst of a pandemic, you and I are this afternoon talking about the need for swift prosecution of those who have taken advantage of the pandemic and looted state resources? Good afternoon, Clement, and afternoon to your viewers. It is absolutely unforgivable that you and I are sitting here discussing this. And, you know, Clement, it's the tip of the iceberg. And that, again, for me, seems like the most unbelievable thing. I mean, 100 cases have been referred to the NPA for prosecution. You, you've, you rightly said 14 um, uh, uh, billion has been lost. We're still looking at 4,100 cases that are still under investigation. The fact that this has even happened is unacceptable. Mm. So the SIU having handed over these 100 cases uh, to the NPA for possible prosecution, you are now saying you want this institution, the NPA, to act swiftly to bring those who looted COVID funds to book. But the question is, do they have the resources and the budget to deal with these cases quickly? Well, look, Clement, there's two things here. On the one hand, we need this to stop. So the president, you know, he's got to stop saying, I'm looking at it, I'm taking action, I'm waiting for investigation. We've got to stop it now. We cannot keep on piling cases onto the NPA. First of all, they've got to look at why does this continue unabated? It seems like COVID never happened for these people who are stealing funds that are that are meant to be for uh, giving people access to right uh, to health, access to essential services. People didn't even have water during COVID because of this type of behavior. So that's the one thing is that it's got to be stopped, and the and the government has got to find uh, find a way to stop it. Uh, from happening. And the second thing is that, yes, those who have been doing this have got to see the inside of a courtroom. There's got to be prosecutions. There's got to be action taken, money recovered. Now, we know that the SIU has been recovering money here and there. But again, you know, this is just unacceptable that in the midst of a global pandemic, in the midst of a country where we haven't even rolled out a proper vaccination program, we are way behind the rest of the world, um, where our health workers have died uh, that, that, you know, there's been stealing of money that was supposed to give those in the front line the, 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 the materials and the, and the stuff they needed to keep safe, to keep us safe. So, I mean, yes, there's got to be a strong message sent. But also, uh, Clement, you and I have got to stop meeting and talking about this because the state has got to stop this from happening. So, so government then, a call has to be made to government. Uh, to recognize how critical the prosecution of those involved in COVID-19 corruption is and find the money because it's there when they want to loot so they can capacitate the law enforcement agencies so that we can then see the swift movement on, on such cases. What is the cost of this COVID-19 corruption, Shanila, on basic human rights? Maybe the looters need to be reminded of the impact of their actions. You know, uh, Clement, we are so busy, you know, looking at the figures which have gone into the billions. You know, the use of the word billion when it comes to the loss of income or loss to, to irregular expenditure or to corruption has become part of our vocabulary. But we forget that at the end of all this looting, at the end of all of this corruption and irregular expenditure are the people who live in South Africa, are the poor people, are the people who have the right to live their lives in dignity and they are being deprived of right. So when you are stealing uh, from the state, you are depriving uh, uh, people in this country of the right to health, of the right to water. I mean, the number of people that contacted us and said that they do not have water, how are people meant to be safe? The right to housing, the right to their basic human rights. At the end of all of this, at the end of all of these billions are people's lives. And that's why we are saying that this has got to stop being about politics. 
This has got to be about bringing people to account who have violated the laws of this country because the violation of those laws is having a massive impact on people's lives. You know, we still have people living in shacks. We still have people who have no water and sanitation. We have schools that have no buildings where children can study. And and yet money is being looted left, right and center. And remember, Clement, that even before COVID, this country has is one of the most unequal countries in the world. We have so many people living in poverty in this country, even before COVID. And now this is depriving them of their right to health in addition to everything else they're suffering.